Welcome back to the channel and today we have a fantastic tutorial. In fact, this has been one of my favorite ones to make so far. Um, we're going to be making a piece of amber, putting an insect inside of it and kind of doing this um, 360 rotation animation. But the real magic with this is not just going to come down to the model that you're using or the lighting. It's going to be this material that we're going to be creating, this um, sort of um, amber material here with a lot of volume absorption and stuff like that. It's fantastic. It looks beautiful. I'm going to be going step by step and I am going to be using somebody else's um, asset as in this bug over here. I'll show you where I got that and I'll give credit to the individual. And for that reason, I won't be putting this final blend file on my Patreon because it uses somebody else's asset that they've already made. And I don't feel good about that. But if you have Blender, which is free, um, you can follow along and make this exact scene today. Um, it's a ton of fun and I have no doubt that you guys will enjoy it. So let's jump in and make this um, fossilized amber animation in Blender. So the bug I'm going to be using is one that I got on Sketchfab. Now, if you don't know about Sketchfab, it's completely free to create an account. I found this one here. I'll put a link to it in the description and I downloaded it. And I'd like to give full credit to the individual who made this. I am allowed to use this for tutorial. It's under Creative Commons as long as I give attribution as stated here in the license agreement, which I am. So I am um, letting you know and you can check that out in the description. And if this is not the bug you're looking for, you can always go search and just type in bug and look for all sorts of bugs that they have here um, that are available for download. So what I did is I took the bug and I imported it into Blender because it was an FPX. So you might be able to find a pre-set up blend file or something like that. But at the end of the day, um, just make sure you have a bug ready in Blender and then we're gonna go ahead and um, build the amber around it and make it into a cool um, little amber animation. So here is my beetle that I ended up importing into Blender. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna grab all of these lights and cameras that I have set up. I'm just gonna um, actually just get rid of that because that was just when I was testing it out. So to make sure we're on the same page, it doesn't matter what bug you have, let's go Shift A and in the scene add in a cube. And let's just make sure that whatever bug you have isn't too big or too small. So mine um, being scaled is gonna be about this big inside of the default cube. And I'm gonna go ahead and just double tap R. I'm gonna rotate my bug here. So I'm assuming if you're using the same bug, you'll just be following along with me. If you're using your own type of bug, you might position it differently. But I think kind of like an angle like this with the shell kind of facing towards the, um, the front here is looking really good. And I'm gonna select the default cube. Now this is the bit that's really fun. You can go into edit mode and then go into the right view and just go S, Y and flatten it a little bit like so. And in some bits, um, we can adjust it later if it's sticking out. But what I'm gonna do is in the front view, I'm gonna right click and go subdivide. Then I'm gonna select this face over here or these two faces. I'm gonna go E to extrude in the front view and go S to scale. Then I'm gonna grab these guys over here in wireframe and go E to extrude and S to scale. Then I'm going to enable proportional editing and I'm just going to kind of adjust it around and just kind of place it like this, kind of making it look like sort of like a chicken nugget around the bug here. Um, you know, you can be as creative with the shaping you want. We just want something that looks, I guess, organic is the word I'm looking for. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, control R, double click, control R hovering over this edge, double click just to add an extra edge. And then I'm gonna press A to select everything and go to the smooth tool here. And then just click on smooth here and just drag it to smooth it out. And in some places you might just wanna grab some more topology and kind of just move it out just a little bit. And then let's press A to select everything, right click and go subdivide. And then one more time with the proportional editing, if there's anywhere where your bug is sticking out, um, go ahead and make sure it's inside like so. Pretty cool. And now I'm going to press A to select everything and with the smooth tool here, just click on a gizmo and smooth it out. Let's go back into object mode, right click and go shade smooth. And let's go to our modifiers and go add modifier search and type in sub and get a subdivision surface. And then we're going to go and click here again and search and type in displace and get a displacement. Then go to our texture properties, click new. And I think making it clouds under type works really well. We're going to give it a scale of one and then you can go over to your modifiers and just bring the strength down and that gives it a little bit more of an organic shape. Once again, at any point you can come in here and edit how this looks. You can even grab your insect 
and you can rotate that and move it around all you like. Um, so I'm gonna go something like that, maybe one more little adjustment. So there we have it. Now we've done the modeling. From here, we're just gonna do lighting and materials. So let's go to our render engine. We're gonna make sure we have it set as cycles. Um, I'm using my GPU. If you don't have a GPU, you can stick to CPU, but that um, could be a little bit slower. Uh, and then you're gonna go over to your render settings here and under the samples, I've set my max samples to 50 and denoising is enabled, which will help a lot. So then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in under lights, an area light. I'm gonna go G and we're gonna move it to the side. We're gonna go R to rotate. And let's go to light settings and give it a strength of 150 under the power and a size of 2.5 meters. And just have it coming off from the side and then in the top view, you're simply gonna go shift D to duplicate it. And then grab these two and enable over here under your pivot transform, the 3D cursor. And then go shift D to duplicate and duplicate those two around like so. So we have them coming here from the side and then grab this one and go shift D, R and just rotate it. Have it kind of coming from the front and this one will give a strength of 220. And we'll make the size 3.5 meters. Okay, and let's change our pivot transform back to median point. Then in our front view, we're just gonna go shift A, add in a camera and I'm just gonna move my camera back like so. And in camera view, you can adjust your camera however you want, but I'm just gonna have a simple front on view like so. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see this is what we have. Now, um, you can also go shift A and just under your mesh options, add in a plane. And that's just, I'm rotating at 90 degrees. And I'm just gonna move this plane back. And obviously this is optional. You might not want a background, but I'm just adding one in. I'm gonna scale it on the X as well. So it's just the plane that we stretched out and placed in the back. And I'm gonna to go to my materials and just give it a, um, a material and call it background. And under the surface here, the base color, I'm gonna make it kind of dark and a little bit orangey. That should give us some pretty nice contrast. So now the really fun bit and this is what's gonna make this look immediately realistic and fantastic. We're gonna select the amber. We're gonna to go to our materials property and click new, and let's just call it amber. And let's start by going over to our shading workspace. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go and grab our base color here and drag on it. We're gonna type in noise and get a noise texture, but we're gonna go with the factor here. So noise texture factor, okay. Then we're gonna go shift a search and get a color ramp node and place it on this cable. Let's drag the black value in and a white value down. And then let's give it under the scale, a scale of seven. And the detail we're gonna make 12. The roughness will make 0.9. And then we're gonna go shift D to duplicate that, bring it down and we're also gonna duplicate our color ramp. And then let's plug that factor into the second one we've created here. This one's gonna go into the normal the color ramp. We're gonna go shift A search and get a bump, a bump node. And let's place that over here and make sure that the color output's going into the height. And the strength, we're gonna make it 0 0.05, like so. And this black value, we're gonna drag back a little bit and the white, we're gonna drag up, like so. And with this one, we're just gonna give it a scale of three, a detail of five, a roughness of 0.8, and there we have it. Now we wanna give this some coordinates. So we're gonna come here and drag on a vector and we're gonna type in texture, coordinate. And let's go with the generated option. So the generated is going in here. And you can then take the generated here as well and drag that into the vector of the bottom input. So now we have a coordinate system. And let's now take this top color ramp and place this into the roughness. Let's also come to our transmission and give it a value of one. And for now, let's just see how we're going. So we're gonna come over here and go Z and go rendered. And so far, this is what you can see, right? It's looking pretty good. Um, we can come here and adjust this slider at the top to adjust the roughness a little bit, maybe drag the black up just a bit more. So it's kind of see-through, but a little bit rough as well. But so far, this is not looking like amber. Yeah, so we're gonna take the base color. We're gonna make it kind of like a yellowish kind of color like this. And it's still not, it's just looking like um, frozen ice, yellow ice or frozen pea. So to make this look really um, a bit more realistic, we're gonna go shift a search and we're gonna type in mix shader. Grab it, place it on here. 
And then in the bottom input, we're going to click on this and drag on it. And we're going to type in emission. Like so. And let's make this orange. And then let's move this over. And we're going to come here to the factor and drag on it and type in layer. And we're going to go with a layer weight and we're going to get the facing. And then we're going to go shift a search and get a color ramp. Place it on here and let's just hone in these values. I bring, bring the black up and the white down a little bit. Until we just get a little bit of a border. Going around the end. Like so. And that just adds a bit of an artistic style to it. it. Makes it look kind of a little bit more popped out from the background. Maybe try changing this to B spline. Make it a little bit more soft. Okay, so now we have that. And then we're going to come over here. And we're going to come to our material output and go Shift A Search. And we're going to type in Volume. And we're going to go with Volume Absorption. Select it. And then plug this volume into the volume here. Change the density to a value of 3. And then change the color here to a yellowish kind of orange color. Like so. And maybe take the value up as well. So there we have it. That is how you can make a nice looking amber. Might bring this a little bit down here. Might make this a little bit less saturated. But you guys kind of get the idea. You can now also mess around with these color ramps to adjust the bump a little bit and the top one to adjust the roughness. But more or less, this is looking good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Shift A, add in a cube empty, select the ember and your bug, holding and Shift select the empty and then go Control P and parent it by keeping the transform. In your layout, you're going to go and make it 140 frames on your timeline. On frame 1, you're going to make sure that the empty is selected by itself, and you're going to press I. Then you're going to come to frame 140, press N to go to your properties, and then go to your item. Come to the Z value here, and let's make that 360. And then hovering over it, press I to insert a keyframe on frame 140. Then select both of these keyframes and press T and make the animation interpolation linear. So it doesn't ease in and ease out. So it's a consistent linear rotation. So now what we're gonna do is we're also gonna go over to our output, go over here to the output file and select somewhere on your computer. And you can export this into a file somewhere as um, PNG sequences and then compile them. But if you wanted to do a direct video, you can just change it to FFmpeg video. Under the encoding, you can change the container to an MP4. And then you should be able to go render and render out the animation. So go ahead and do that. But for now, I'm just going to go to frame one and I'm going to go render and just render a single frame to see what this looks like. And there we have it, guys. We have this really awesome looking tree sap amber resin. It's really rich, got a beautiful color. And in here you can see we have our bug beautifully embedded. Um, so go ahead, work on your lighting a little bit more if you want to. Um, change things up. I'll quickly show you guys my original, um, which by the way, is the exact same thing. I haven't shown you anything that isn't on my original. This is my original. And I'll quickly just hide this. You can see here it's the exact same thing, exact same nodes. Um, and yeah, that's it. I might have just had the red a little bit more saturated. That's about it. Um, it's the exact same thing that I rendered out as an animation. Um, usually I will upload these to Patreon, but because I'm using somebody else's asset, uh, I don't really feel good about putting this final project onto Patreon. So go ahead and just make it. I have offered this tutorial for free to the community, so you could easily make this, and I hope you guys do. And I'll see you next time for another tutorial.